So in this short video, we'll be looking at how to draw a cross section using a topographic base and the geology shown on it. So our mission here is to draw a cross section through this geological map. So the first thing to do here is to carefully draw on the section line so that we know what we're doing. So we're going to draw it between those two points there and it's a straight line through the map like this. So we know what we're doing. And I'm just going to mark two places, one there and one there, at either end of the section line. And we're going to use these for reference to know how far along the section line we are when we come to plot it. The next thing we need to do is to set the scale up on some graph paper. So I'm going to take a map strip like this and measure one kilometre from the scale bar here. So that's one kilometre, the total length is two, so that's one kilometre. And I'm going to come down here and set this up so that I know that that is one kilometre horizontally and it's going to be one kilometre vertically. So I'm going to put this over here to set this up to be one kilometre vertical. So not only is the cross section going to be drawn at the same scale as the map, the horizontal and vertical scales will be equal. So that will be sea level. That will be one kilometre vertically or a thousand metres. And now we can divide the scale here into equal parts representing 100 metres or whatever scale we want to draw it at. So let's do that. That's one kilometre, which is one, two, three point two centimetres. So we can put that at 1.6, that's 500 metres. And we can basically now split this up. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. So that's four, three, to 100 meters above sea level through there. And we can simply do the same through this section here. So next we are going to measure out the section length on here. We'll put a marker in here so we know where we are. So that's here. I'll label that A and label that A there on our section line. And now I'm going to take the map strip that we used before, simply lay it out at A. So there's A, get it on properly. There's A and that's B. And we'll take that information in here so we have the right length of section on our profile. So that is where B is. So now we know the length of section that's the same as on the map. So the next thing is to plot a topographic profile. So I'm going to take this from here, put my map strip back on this, line it up with A. So this is the other side of the strip, so it's clean. And we're just going to mark on the topographic contours on here. So if you look really carefully, this one here is 1,000 metres. That's 800. So the contour spacing is every 50 metres. So that's 800, 900, 1,000. Just so we know what we are, just worth checking, that's 800. So that goes up to 950, back down to 800, 600, 400, and we end up at 400 over here, just so we know roughly where we are. And now we'll do this properly. So line the map strip up on A. That's 1,000, it's a hilltop, so we hit the 1,000 twice. I'll just label that 1,000. That is 800, and I'll just put the other ticks in there so we know where we are, 800 comes down across a valley there, so that's down, down, I'll just put that for a valley, that's 800 again, tick, 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 that's the same, so that's the same, that's 8, 5, 8, 5, 8, 5, 9, can't quite see, carefully lift that away, it stays on 9, doesn't quite at the top, so that's 9, 9, 9, so those are all 9s, 900 metres, 850, 800, that's easy, 600, 400, 
and that goes down below 400. That's just a little corner there, just touches, so it's another valley bottom. So that's at 350. Back up to here, there's a, if you look at this, it's going down to 350, back up, down to 350 again. So that's a, a 350 there. Broad hill, and that's 400, and that's where B is, down in here. So now I'll just label that A so we know exactly where we are, is the starting point. So there is our topographic data, and we'll now take this and put it to the graph paper. So I'm gonna use a pencil to plot this, just in case I make errors and I can, con can correct them as I go. So let's just line this all up, there's A, B, Again, so let's go back up and plot this on the graph. So those two points there are at a thousand meters. So that's going to come up in a hill. That's at 800 there. Notice I'm putting the those ones there. Now we can fill in that's 900 there, which is just there. And put in those other ones. So that's the hill coming down like that. Quite a steep hill, isn't it? Then that goes to 800 here. And those are, um, these two here are below 800, so there's a 750s in here. So that one's there, that one's there. So the valley's gonna come down like that. We go all the way up to nine here. About there. So those are 850s, that's an 850, 850, 850. So the thing's gonna come up like this down and up again, all the way through to nine there. So that's our 900 in here. And again, those just roller coaster along the hilltop like this, nine. Now we can go, down we go. So that's eight there. That's 850. That's six, which is here there so that one's seven that's 750 and what's equally space they come down that goes down to 400 which is here so that one's 500 so I'm just working backwards and forwards filling them in as I go it's quite a good way of doing it so you make a check that goes down all the way down low so this is at 350 350 350 350 just above that line there, isn't it? So it's there, there, so it just comes down to there. And then there's a broad hill, that goes to 350 again over here. So there's a very broad hill, not high enough to hit the next contour. Down, that's 400 there, and that's the end of our section line. So just, just sketch over this, and that is our topographic profile. Just tidy it up. There we go. So that's our topographic profile from A to B. And I'll just ink that in. So there's our inked in profile. The next task is to take the geology from the map and put it onto here. So for this, I'll take a new map strip and I'll just mark on it A. So that I can line this up with A on our profile and I'm just gonna measure in and put the geological boundaries on. So that is where the top of this gray unit or the edge of the gray unit is. There's the other side of the gray unit there. Okay, and we see it again here. So if we don't touch it up, that's right. Little strip of this yellow and then the green. So that's, I'll just call that gray in here. We'll work out what it is in a minute. That's also gray to there. That's yellow, and then that's green in there. So that's it, and then we come down to B. So we can take that information and put it onto our profile. Okay, so off we go, let's do that. Let's line this up again, put it through like this. That's where the, just line this up. That's where the gray comes in there and here, and just drop it down and here. And there's the yellow there and the green. And I'm just going to uh, take that way and add some color on the strip. 
Okay, so this frontal bit here is this uh, sandstone group, the purple. I'm just going to shade it really lightly and not very deep because I don't want to prejudice where I take things into the subsurface. Not yet, anyway. Um, and we've actually we've got some more in here. So this little piece in here is also that material, the sandstone group, none others. Uh, let's get the gray on. So gray forms this patch where the number 15 is, which we'll talk about in a minute, sitting on here. And there's a little patch in here before we get to the yellow. And then we'll put the yellow on, just this little smidgen of yellow. And then the green. Like that. So we've collected now the surface geology. Now our task, of course, is to work out how these all relate to one another and therefore explain what happens in the subsurface and what's been eroded, at least to an extent. Well, in drawing the cross section, it's really important to look at the map pattern at the same time. We can stay on the edge of the grey and walk all the way around this outlier. So this is a patch connected in the subsurface by a boundary that runs beneath this outcrop. Well, let's take this and put it onto the cross section. So there we are. We've got the patch of quartzite sitting above the sandstone group rocks which lie in the valleys underneath. So this is an isolated patch, it's an outlier, separated from the main outcrop trace of the quartzite which we're going to put on next. Well for this we can see that this boundary presumably is inclined back down towards the southeast and all I'm going to do is simply check this base of the quartzite and more or less take it down along the same orientation as we had here. So we're just going to take this boundary down like this into the subsurface so that we have the sandstone group continuing down in here and the quartzite just forming this layer on top which takes our knowledge from the outlier and takes it on down through. Okay, so what about the other units? We've got the uh, anilid uh, formation, which is the yellow and the green. Well, if we look at the map, we can see that they never cross each other. They're essentially running as a strip with the yellow rocks always having the quartzite on the left-hand side and the metamorphic rocks on the right-hand side. And so we can use that information now to take into the cross section. So let's just draw in the top of the quartzite coming down like this a thin layer of the annelid quite thin isn't it coming down like that and then the green metamorphic rocks on top so i'll just put the annelid on here it's a thin strip coming down like that inclined down gently towards the southeast we'll just color up our quartzites underneath so they always lie adjacent and to outcrop what would be on the left or the western side of the annelid. So we have the western side with the quartzite. Yes, the western side with the quartzite. The eastern side of the metamorphic rocks. The metamorphic rocks are over here. So there is the cross section that honours the outcrop and takes it into the subsurface. So what I'm going to do now is simply ink that in. And I've drawn it so that I've shown that the boundary at the base of the quartzite links across the area where it's been eroded. And I'm also going to show that the annelid formation presumably went over the top originally, but has been eroded away. And presumably also the metamorphic rocks originally went over the top. So now's the time to add the bedding information. And we can see that the dips in the quartzite here, 16, 16, 17, 15, 18 right over there, but all in the mid to high teens compared to the sandstone group, which are 
well that goes up to 15 but otherwise 10 and 6 even so we have a more gentle dip to the east in the sandstone group than we do in the quartzites and the quartzites are dipping at 16 degrees let's just measure 16 degrees on here if I do that I can see that the quartzites are effectively dipping in here parallel to their basal contact so I'm just going to put some dashes in here to imply the bedding what's interesting is that up here the dips look like they're a little bit steeper I'll just move that like this yeah they are because that contact's dipping at about 10 degrees and these rocks are dipping at 15 so if we honor that then there's potentially a discordance and we can label that is there discordance bed parallel to contact here so we can add information as we go let's continue this by adding the sandstone group bedding which is a little bit more gentle like this sandstone group beds and they must be discordant to boundary so in other words we can do a little cartoon here which illustrates how that works so I'm just going to use this part of the of the paper so essentially what we're going to do here is say that the quartzites potentially come down like this and that potentially there's a discordance in here which means that this is an unconformity between the quartzites on top the grey rocks and the sandstone group underneath discordant beds okay so the final piece of housekeeping we're going to do we're going to, we've got the scale on here we should say that this is west north west east south east we've got a and b marks so that the cross section ties to the map um, the final thing we can talk about is what on earth are metamorphic rocks doing on cross on top of these sedimentary ones so to recap what we've been careful about is making sure that we've got the vertical and horizontal scales equal this we've taken the topography then to build a topographic profile we transferred the geology onto the topographic profile and then when interpreting the subsurface and the eroded parts of the area so we've used the map relationships to understand what's going on on the cross section moving between the plan view and the profile view to build up 3d understanding we've found an unconformity and we've also identified an additional problem about metamorphic rocks lying on top of sedimentary and that requires some further thought.